Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project I'm working on. Helping out a viewer again here. Uh, this is from Eric up in Minnesota. He sent me a part off of an engine, an old gasoline engine. Uh, I believe it's hit and miss type engine. This is a piece that uh, is on the magneto assembly, he told me. I think it helps to determine when to fire the magneto. I'm not exactly sure. I don't have all the pieces, but he did send me a couple of pieces here. And uh, we got a broken tab on a casting. Uh, someone has tried to repair it in the past and looks like they uh, failed. <laughs> he sent it along to me to see if I can do a better job on it. I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, this one's going to be challenging. Uh, we'll see. Let's, uh, let me zoom in here and kind of show you what we got to work with. So he sent me some pictures. I don't have a real clear understanding of exactly how all this works, but um, there's this gear here and it kind of engages on this piece here somehow or another. And there's a tab that is on this gear that engages, I believe, with uh, this right here and this is a cam shaped lobe there and i think that's what fires the magneto not exactly sure how all it works but that's really not important what is important is uh the job at hand so this is the gear it's got a casting that's kind of riveted to it here and um, this piece here is supposed to be on there kind of like such and it has broken and it looks like it has, that someone attempted at one time to weld this. Someone, I'm, I'm guessing just looking at the color of what's in here, it looks like someone tried to weld it, which typically welding cast iron, at least for traditional methods, doesn't work too well. Uh, and then also someone tried to braze it, uh, but the braze really didn't bond. Uh, it probably wasn't hot enough. I'm guessing, I don't know, but regardless, it's, it's, it's broken. It needs to be reattached. And uh, I told him I'd give him a shot. And this is, is gonna be a challenging piece uh, just because there's not a lot to work with. Work holding is gonna be an issue here. Um, we'll see what we can do. First step is to try to get all this old attempts of repairs ground off of it and try to leave some of that original brake mark in there where I can kind of um, index this thing back together. And then I'm going to have to come up with some type of way of, to clamp this in place, to hold it in place, and then go from there. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. All right, guys, uh, let me get this thing over in the vise and uh, get out the angle grinder and start doing some grinding on it. So I got this over here in my vise angle grinder and And I'm going to go work on this piece, probably just do it on the bench grinder. Try to get uh, that cleaned up as best I can. I think we got this uh, ready to kind of put back on there. The challenge that we've got with this piece is going to be work holding. And uh, here's, my, here's my idea. So we got a 5 8 inch hole through the center of this. I measure this, this has got a radius on it, and I check that radius, it's an inch and a quarter radius. So I think what I'm gonna do is I got a piece of inch and a quarter stock here that this uh, piece fits up on very nicely. I think I'm gonna take this over to my lathe, I'm gonna turn me a stem down on it that's an inch or five eighths of an inch that'll fit in here. And then that'll leave me a piece of inch and a quarter sticking up here kind of as a support for it that'll self align it with the hole. I can clamp this to this piece of metal and hopefully that'll give me some support to get it braised. So I'm gonna run over to the lathe and uh, we'll turn that out real quick and just make a little fixture to help hold it in place. Over at my metal lathe, got that piece of inch and a quarter stock in there. I'm gonna start by just facing this backside. It really doesn't need it for what I'm gonna use it for, but 
the heck, right? All right. I need for my uh, stem, I'm going to turn down to 5 8 to be about 2 inches long. So I'll just put me a mark on here. Nothing critical about that measurement at all. It's going through a through hole. Start turning this down. And there we go, one um, little fixture to hold that piece in place. Hopefully, let's uh, go see how it works out. So here we go. I've got my little uh, fixture, my mounting fixture. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna push it in there tight. I'm gonna leave a little gap in there, just uh, so I don't have any welding material, brazing material go in between there. Um, that's gonna hold it right there where it needs to be and uh, clamp it in place. I'm just gonna come in here with some vice grips, I think. Let's see if we can, if I get it lined up straight, I can move it around after the fact here. That is right where I want it to be. So um, I think what we're going to do here, see if I can get that a little bit tighter. I don't like that. I like the setup. I just didn't like how tight it was. So uh, let me get a better grip on this. There we go. I like that better. Let me get it lined back up. Here we go. I think I'm happy with that. I got contact in there. And to braze this, I think what I'm gonna do is instead of flame brazing, and I think I'm gonna TIG braze this. Uh, I haven't done any TIG brazing in a while. So uh, I think this will be a fun little exercise. This is a smaller piece. Typically I like using flame brazing when I got a bigger piece that has a lot of heat in it. Um, smaller pieces like this I think work better for TIG brazing uh, just because you can, you're not going to get as much heat from that TIG uh, torch as you will from a flame torch. Uh, but with that said, I'm going to start by getting the flame torch out. We're just going to put a preheat on it and uh, then we'll come in there with the TIG torch and actually braze it using uh, either some silicon bronze or aluminum bronze. I gotta look and see which one I've got over there, but we'll use one or the other and uh, braze her up. That's the game plan. All right, we're gonna start by just uh, preheating our part. And I've just got my torch out here with the rosebud on it. I just wanna get some heat in there because that TIG torch is only gonna be capable of generating so much heat and it's going to be very localized heat and I want this cast iron to have some heat in it before we ever start. So that's the whole idea here.
and that should be plenty. I've got my TIG set up over here. Let me get my welding helmet on. And I'm using aluminum bronze. Get this foot pedal over here where I can control it. Making sure I'm getting some argon out. Sounds like I am. So first off, let me just say I'm using silicon bronze here instead of aluminum bronze. I think I said I was using aluminum just a minute ago, but uh, I had both, but I, I kind of like the silicon bronze a little bit better personally. So uh, that's what I went with. A little bit about TIG brazing here, and, and I'll preface this by saying that I am by no means an expert on TIG brazing. Uh, what I have learned, I have learned from my friend Jim Bollinger over at Do Right Fab. Uh, Jim spent some time with me kind of teaching me the basics of TIG and uh, I've learned to use it and uh, learned to, to be effective at it, but I am by no means an expert. But when you're brazing with cast iron here, um, a couple of things to remember. Number one, it's a little bit different than when you're welding uh, with TIG. You're really not trying to create that puddle in the base metal like you do with steel and then add the filler in there to it. Uh, in the case of cast iron, you want to get the cast iron hot enough that it will melt the bronze and that let that bronze flow through there, but you're not actually trying to puddle the metal of the cast iron. If you get it so hot that it melts the cast iron, it will create a weak spot in the cast iron and um, the part will very likely break, but it won't be the braze that breaks. It'll actually be the cast iron base material right under the braze. So you're, you want to keep your temperature down a little bit low. I was running my torch at about um, 80, uh, was it amps, I guess, uh, about 80 on the meter. And that's with the pedal. That's, that's at 100%. When I push that pedal down 100%, we're running about 80, uh, which is much lower than what I would be doing if I was uh, brazing with steel. So again, you just kind of heat it up in there, get it until it's nice and hot. You're not trying to puddle that base material and then just flow that braze down in there. Uh, the nice thing here is uh, compared to flame brazing where you have a flux on the rods, there's no flux needed when you're TIG brazing because the argon creates a shielding gas that protects it from oxidation. Uh, so you can really kind of see what's going on a little bit better uh, than, than, than when you're flame brazing. I really like TIG brazing, particularly again, like I said earlier, on smaller pieces where you can control that heat a little bit better. Uh, if you got a part with a lot of mass in it, uh, I just go for the flame. Uh, torch and do it the old-fashioned way, but that's the way I go about it. That's uh, that works. What works for me, your mileage may vary. I got a little bit extra up underneath this bottom, but I think what we're going to do is just let this cool down now. We're going to wrap this up now and um, let it cool down. So I've let this cool down for quite a while now. It's still a little bit warm, so I got some gloves on. I'm going to take a uh, little uh, grinding wheel here, grinding, grinding deburring tool, whatever, get in here. And uh, I'm going to try to cut some of this out in the bottom just for some clearance. Uh, we got a little bit more in there than I needed, but I wanted to make sure I got a good penetration. Uh, so we're going to are going to remove a little bit of metal there. On the outside, I'm probably just going to leave it like it is. Uh, I don't think it looks too bad. Let me get the air compressor going. Hopefully that'll give him all the clearance he needs in there. If he needs a little bit more, he can always uh, grind a little bit more out, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be good. And uh, flipping it over around to the other side, we can kind of see it. Uh, 
That side looks really good. I got a little bit of a bulge on that side, but I'm not going to bother grinding it out. Uh, but I think that is probably going to be an adequate repair. I'm probably going to take a 5 8 inch drill bit and just run down that hole, make sure I didn't get any um, any kind of trash or anything in there. Uh, it's probably, it looks like it's all right, but we'll do that just to be on the safe side. Hey guys, I think we've got this thing ready to go. So this is the actually the arbor that this fits on. Again, this is a little cam-shaped lobe. I think this is what fires the magneto. Uh, so oil hole there. This uh, gear comes over here. You got this little dog that engages the lobe on there, depending on which direction it's turning. I'm not exactly sure how this works. But I am sure that I had to do a little bit of a massaging of this down here. I did some off camera with a file of more die grinding. I put a little chamfer on the edge here just to get some clearance. Uh, this piece was actually a little bit too long. I had to take the grinder and just grind it off a little bit short, probably from where I didn't have it in the exact position when I brazed it. But what is important is, is that that is turning now. It's uh, nice and free. There, there's, it's not binding up or anything. When I first put it on there, it was. So um, I've got all the clearances in there I need. And with that, I think this is ready to send back. Job done. And with that, I think we're gonna box this back up and send it all back to Eric. He had uh, wrapped it all up and put it in a box here. Uh, priority mailbox so we're just going to wrap it right back up in the same stuff he sent it to me in and get it in the mail headed back his direction so eric uh, hope you're happy with that i think that's going to do the trick i feel pretty confident about that brazing job holding up uh it looks like it's pretty sound sound to me uh unlike that original repair uh that was a uh, pretty sloppy so uh i'm not sure who did that Hopefully it wasn't you, Eric. If it is, I'm not making making fun of your skills. Some people just uh, don't braise as well as others. I've got a lot of practice doing it, and uh, I'm not going to say mine are the world class, but my jobs typically will hold up well over time. Uh, at least that's been my experience so far. So, Eric, with uh, that, I hope you have good luck with this piece, and we'll get it mailed back to you. And with that, that's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up are appreciated, as are your comments, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.